Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug clonazepam, also known as clonopin or rivotril. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Clonazepam belongs to the benzodiazepine drug classification, sometimes just called benzos for short. Benzodiazepines work by enhancing the effects of the inhibitory neurotransmitter called gamma-aminobutyric acid, more commonly known as GABA. That's a lot to take in, so let's break down what all of that means. So in our body, we have neurons that transfer information throughout the entire brain and body. And the way that this information gets from neuron to neuron is through electrical signals, which we call action potentials. These action potentials are vital in the transfer of information throughout the body. We also have neurotransmitters, which influence these action potentials. We have excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters. To simplify things, we'll say that these little yellowish red circles here are the excitatory neurotransmitters. You can think of excitatory neurotransmitters as the ones that are excited, the ones that are promoting or stimulating action potentials. So they are exciting or encouraging whichever neurons that they're acting on. This means that information can travel more easily or more quickly from neuron to neuron. And inhibitory neurotransmitters are the opposite. They are kind of the downers, the ones that slow down or prevent action potentials. The neurotransmitter called GABA is actually the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Again, just to simplify things, let's say that GABA are these little green dots. GABA reduces the excitability of neurons, which slows down the transfer of information. One more time, let's review all that. So benzodiazepines, like clonazepam, work by enhancing GABA. So clonazepam enhances the main downer of the nervous system, which results in all sorts of inhibitory effects throughout the body. This includes sedation, drowsiness, decreased anxiety, muscle relaxing effects, and more. This is why you can think of clonazepam as a CNS depressant. All right, now that we know how clonazepam works, it's a lot easier to work through what it's used for. Clonazepam is used in the treatment of various seizure types, including myoclonic seizures, atonic seizures, absence seizures in some cases, Lennox-Gaston syndrome, which is a type of epilepsy, and more. Seizures occur during the abnormal excitation of neurons in the brain. So it makes sense that clonazepam, a drug that inhibits neuron activity, works to treat those excitable neurons. Again, by slowing down the electrical activity of the brain. Clonazepam is also used for the treatment of panic disorder, to reduce anxiety and help manage panic attacks. Off-label, clonazepam is also used to treat generalized anxiety, insomnia, downbeat nystagmus, restless leg syndrome as a muscle relaxant, and more. Many of clonazepam side effects relate to how benzos work, which again is essentially as a central nervous system depressant. CNS depression may present as sedation, dizziness, weakness, unsteadiness, and more. Severe CNS depression can eventually lead to loss of consciousness, coma, and even death. There are many other possible side effects, just some of which include hypotension, possibly due to decreased anxiety, respiratory depression due to the CNS depression, suicidal ideations, which are very important to look out for, tachycardia, blurred vision, and many more. Clonazepam is contraindicated in patients with hypersensitivity to benzodiazepines. Also, avoid use in patients with narrow-angle glaucoma, as clonazepam may increase intraocular pressure in rare cases. According to manufacturers, clonazepam should also not be given to those with severe liver disease. Precaution should be used in patients with a history of addiction and patients with suicidal ideations. Clonazepam should not be given to patients with untreated depression. Also, exercise caution in patients with respiratory disease like COPD or sleep apnea, in patients with renal impairment, and in elderly patients. In all of these patients, doses may have to be lowered. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of clonazepam. Assess the duration, type, and intensity of seizures. Be aware that there are many interactions with clonazepam, which may increase or decrease its effectiveness. Other CNS depressants especially, like opioids and alcohol, may increase the effects of sedation and respiratory depression, which can be life-threatening. When a patient first starts on clonazepam, ensure that they have the proper support to assist with ambulation and other activities of daily living. This will help with drowsiness and dizziness, and will help reduce the risk of falls, especially in elderly patients. 
To avoid withdrawal symptoms, do not discontinue clonazepam abruptly, but instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions. Lastly, for the treatment of overdose, a benzodiazepine antagonist, such as flumazenil, may be used as an antidote. Flumazenil blocks or inhibits GABA receptors, reducing the symptoms of overdose. And that's about it for the basics of clonazepam. If you have any questions or would like me to cover a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.